Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, ko whakakotahi mai nei i raru i te maru, o ngā maunga whakahi, o maunga kōrero o te rohe, ngai tu ahurere. Koutou e pupuri tonu ana ki te mana o e nei rohe. Tēnā tātou katoa. Tēnei o te tai tokerau, o te tai rāwhiti, o waikato hoki. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia ora mai tātou katoa. Kia ora. I had a speech and then I listened to Minister Woods' speech and then I rewrote my speech and then I heard hi hi to speech and then I chucked my speech away and totally rewrote it and then I just listened to Andrew stolen quite a few of my lines so I've been writing again. Who knows where we've ended up Farno? I am pretty stoked it's really important to be accountable before you all today before you all, all the time, as a minister in the area of homelessness. No little thing, a really massive thing, um, to be able to be honest about where we're at, how we got here, and what we need to resolve. The fact that no one in Aotearoa, especially not tangata whenua, not rangatahi, not our queer like Joan, should ever have to be homeless in Aotearoa where we actually do have what we need for no one to be living without secure, warm, safe home for permanent endurance as well. So I'll start there and see how, we are, how else we get on. And also remembering um, I was privileged to be here yesterday for other kōrero at the conference and stuck on my mind is also Fire Caroline, um, Hedewini and Helen's um, highlighting of women and our older women particularly as an understanding and I think one of the questions that Andrew got was about um, the housing crisis has not impacted on everyone in the same way and we are still needing to understand properly the very unique ways that the housing crisis has discriminated against particular groups of people and communities, especially those who were already struggling. And with that, I think I'm starting off, and I'm gonna read this, I'm reading this, uh, with a political clear position that we must re-establish housing's primary role as a home rather than just a financial asset that we need to reduce speculative investment in existing housing stock, that's the flipping, and making home ownership more accessible for first home buyers. That is from the GPS, that is from the government policy statement. And I asked my amazing staff to bring that back up to me this morning because I wanted to make it really, really clear. Houses are homes for people to live in, to put down roots first and foremost, not just a way to make already wealthy people even more wealthy. I think that's the starting point. It's important to be explicit about that because that has a massive part of why we are where we are today. This didn't need to happen. The state of our country today um, the lack of affordable, good quality whare, um, particular groups being in an intergenerational mamai about living without basic needs, that all could have been prevented with a clear political statement and then the decision making to ensure that we are indeed treating housing and building of communities as homes for people to live in, where they are connected to their local communities for endurance, where they are feeling stable and that they've got relationships with their schools, local businesses, local workplaces, where people are connected rather than looking out their windows, wondering what is going on in their own neighbourhoods and feeling like they have to leave. So a lot of the lack of that clear positioning led to decisions which saw us arrive where we are today. So how do we get out of it? Well, we've been talking about that all of this conference, absolutely. You all have not just been talking about it, but you've been role modelling it. There's a few points I want to focus on. Of course, I'm here in my role as Associate Housing Minister in this particular area of homelessness. But I do want to acknowledge that when we are talking about homelessness, and this is where Hai Hai Tu's Kōrero is 
always clear and staunch and relevant, is the most relevant uh, and essential voices and leadership when we are talking about ending homelessness are the very people with lived experience, the very people who have been um, at the forefront of our convoluted systems that Andrew was just pointing out need to come together better to impact on the very people who need these services and the support. It is those very people whose expertise and experience has been undermined for generations and for decades. And why I wanted to mention that today, because this is one of my priorities in the homelessness space, is making sure that we support a safe way for those with lived experience to help us lead this work is because, and I, I am, I am ho-ha with political election years. I wish this stuff wasn't a political football. As Hi Hi Tu said, these are real people's lives that we are all in an election campaign year in. But one thing I think is important, you cannot end homelessness, you cannot address the housing crisis while at the same time continuing to de dehumanise and stigmatise the very, very people who are requiring and deserving of the most help. And you are seeing that right now across the polit political narrative. And I thank you all constantly for rejecting that. I just caught up with Mahira Maihi yesterday here, who said she was on uh, morning political TV, political TV, live TV, having to bat back again and again the stigmatising of young people, uh, the linking of short punitive approaches to um, offending, and that in this role, the sector, whatever you want to call it that we are in, it is about supporting people, not stigmatising people. And I do want to thank you for continuing to hold all politicians to account on that. We cannot continue to get the resources to where they need to go while there is a dominant narrative, a dominant story about the very people that we are trying to support. It removes the agency from those very people who need the support to realise their own dreams. It removes the strength from the very people who have got strength and we just have not yet managed to affirm it. It removes the ability for governments to do what we are supposed to do, which is to evolve support and resource out to the very communities to lead this work, including, and this is, again, this is Hai Hai Tu's words that I am using, to those who are otherwise known as undesirables. They are the very people who, whose expertise we need to help us do this work. And it is also not devolving authority, mana and resources in a way that diminishes government responsibility to also always, always having a role to uphold the public common good that is housing for Aotearoa, for any country. So there's quite a bit of an explicit difference there between get out of the way and neglect public housing and ruin the role of government as having a responsibility to care for its people and its communities. And that's quite different from, if we really mean that, then we have to work with in proper, uh, authentic relationship and partnership with mana whenua and tangata whenua, with iwi hapu and Māori in every single community, with the very communities who are impacted on the most, whether that is, oh my gosh, and it definitely is, disabled people, who it is quite scandalous that we have got to the point of not having enough accessible housing for those people and their whānau, for example, with rainbow young people who have unfortunately been impacted by much of the social cohesion service breakdown over many generations and are at the forefront of the impact of homelessness. With women, as Fire Caroline and Helen outlined to us yesterday, with the various groups who have not been looked after by our services, and that is the approach that this government has absolutely started. I want to continue with that very approach, and it's an approach that we have not seen. And at this point, I wanted to link in the straight connection, the direct connection with my prevention violence work and my ministerial role in that. 
the very solutions and system fixes that you have all been uh, calling for for quite some time are absolutely directly related to the transformational approach of Te Aurere Kura, which many of you know and are involved in as the 25-year elimination strategy so people can live free from violence and can live safe and well. We cannot do that without a strength-based holistic well-being approach. While I am working in a homelessness space and I am really proud that we are starting to make inroads, for example, in, and I wish we didn't need it, but rangatahi transitional housing while we fix up our broader public and community housing system and get that supply up there, but recognising that the current systems absolutely, well, they they have barely worked for people, but let alone the unique needs and discrimination against rangatahi. And again, Mahira and the team in Manaki Rangatahi who have been pushing, pushing, pushing for us to have very unique and bespoke work around rangatahi in particular who should never in this country be homeless. But let's make sure we have got the community experts on board to help us um, resolve that in the meantime. I'm very proud of and Hai Hoto talked about this, of a tangata whenua-led response to homelessness. Housing First is not from Aotearoa, but Māori have just taken it, tailored it, worked it, and are really making it clear that we can actually have a unique tangata whenua response to homelessness, and I'm also proud of supporting that. I'm proud of supporting the local innovation uh, funding that has allowed for things like rainbow young people guidelines for services to be able to deal with and work with rainbow young people in a way that is safe. For marae based Fano whole of Fano programs to be able to work with people to provide housing and homelessness services and so many other examples of working differently. I'm proud of all of that. But I know that it's not even just across housing ministers that we need to address the housing crisis. It's across all of the ministers, all of the community. It's education, it's oh my goodness, it's health. It's our justice systems and how they interact with people's well-being. It's making sure that all of the parts of people's well-being are linked up. In my prevention violence space, and remember we're in year one and a half of a 25 year strategy, I am proud that we are starting to see that way of working. I am proud that we are clear in the call for more relational commissioning. You know that we've got the social sector commissioning work. You also know, and I agree, that we can't wait for the five year time frame for that stuff to kick into place. We need it now. And I am very clear to officials, look for those opportunities at every opportunity to have something that is more co-designed, that is authentically a way of providing support to people that doesn't have the contractual burdens that you've all had to work with for so, so long. This stuff is moving. It's going in a transformational direction. It's important and it is very different from the way that we have been doing things. I want to continue to work in that very way. I do not see how any government can work in that way while also holding an approach that continues to stigmatise and dehumanise people at the very same time. It's just not going to work, especially in the prevention violence space. Those short-term punitive approaches um, just are not and never have worked. So I did want to make that really clear point today. Um, hmm, where did we get to? What are we covering? Look, I think I, I, I want to honour the time too, and I realise we are a little bit behind the programme. Oh, I think my final, my final word is more, more government support, I acknowledge this, is needed for community housing providers, for Māori-led housing, and hello for Pacifica-led housing, which we have got a massive gap in, which again is unacceptable considering the disproportionate impact that housing has for Pacific people, families and communities. So that stuff needs to be really focused on. I acknowledge my colleague, uh, Minister Edmonds, yesterday is working with us to make sure that we are supporting um, capability in Pacific-led housing as well. Community housing providers and kainga order are complementary, not competing. Housing as a public good and community need requires all of us to keep working together, not for government to step back 
in that way to devolve power and resources, yes, but to always maintain a strong government responsibility for housing, to better support community housing providers to be able to fill in that need where you are also more suited because you have the insight, the skills, the experience, and the know-how and are able to help us resolve this issue so that we really do have tamariki who can accept and demand a safe, long-term, healthy, um, dignifying place and community to call their home, not just today, but for generations to come. Kia ora tato katoa.